three, two, one. at my team's show and tell claps in the chat for whoever just presented a thing that's really cute yeah hi chrissy hello skibby <laughs> i'm so excited to talk to you again i love getting to talk to you <laughs> today you did something very gay uh it was your yesterday technically but it was my today i love time zone differences what did i do i posted <laughs> a very i was feeling myself this morning i posted a pretty good selfie oh yeah uh and in reply to this selfie, you wrote, not to sound like a vampire, <laughs> but sexy neck, babe. And <laughs> when I read that, I was like, I love you more than, honestly, I could ever string together with the appropriate words. I love you so much. That comment <laughs> sent me places. It was, it, it really made my day. I'm glad. It was true. I, it came from the heart. <laughs> Your deep, deep vampire heart. Your cold, dead vampire heart. <laughs> you yeah. made your little happy werewolf friend here very happy with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm Scooby. I am a once upon a time romance professional. Now putting those skills to use out in the real world, I guess. Now a Tinder professional. Now a Tinder professional. <laughs> uh, but I'm also a video game producer by day and lonely lesbian also by day, as it says in my Tinder profile, as we just mentioned. <laughs> um, yeah, that's me. I'm Chrissy, aka Zection on the internet, and I write things. I write things. You write good things, and you also write really good kisses. I write the kisses. You write really hot sex scenes. I write the sexy times. I have been known on occasion. <laughs> to write some sexy times. Uh, some very good sexy times. Thank you. We recently spoke of how there are a lot of lines you've written that I love. I won't talk about one of them here because it's just for you okay. and me. But there are so many more. There are so many more that I adore. And I feel like as I read through romance novels, that's something I don't always get. Frequently I do, thank God, but occasionally even a good romance novel will let me down and not have that kind of line that sticks out as like, yeah, this was the book. This line was this book for me. I'm trying to think if this book had that that we're about to discuss. I don't think it did. And that's not a knock against the book. It's not because... We uh, fucking loved this book. We loved this book a lot. We loved this book more than I thought I was going to love this book. It's also been a little while since I read it now, so I'm glad I took at least high-level notes to discuss with you. Yeah. Uh, do we have anything else we want to talk about before we dive right in? I'm, I'm excited to talk about this book, admittedly. I promised earlier that I would tell you all about Hebert Dorothea, and I can't really without spoiling some things. Yes. But when okay. you finish the game... I will let you know, and we'll talk Holy about it. Holy shit, Hubert and Dorothea. If you don't... I don't know who you're going to pair with whom, but... Uh, Dorothea and Petra are going to sail off into the sunset of Brigid and live happily ever after, and it will be known that Dorothea is the person whom she loved okay, the most. Okay, that's so, valid. Uh, I already know that. Okay, the <laughs> problem with Black Eagles is that they're all gay. Everyone is And they're together. all good together. Yeah. <laughs> Hubert is the only man, Hubert is the only man that I've ever considered writing a kisses every girl. That's wild, because that has been so explicitly saved for the good Woolawas really in, your, in your repertoire. So that's, that's how much I love Hubert. That's a lot. I feel like, admittedly though, as I just told you, everyone kisses Bernadetta <laughs> is my alternative to you. Or Dorothea kisses every girl because Dorothea would kiss that's every the one, girl. That's the one that I was planning on that's doing. I was actually going to tell. <laughs> yes. oh, oh, that makes me very happy. Uh, yeah, so listener, listener out there, I just hit the time skip of Fire Emblem Three Houses on Nintendo Switch, uh, which is why we are gushing about it a little bit because... It's only been over a year since this game came out, and I'm only just now playing it. Um, but I already knew what ships I was kind of drawn to. That's part of why I wanted to play it. I love dating sims with a chess game mini game because <laughs> that's what. And these... you like Fire Emblem? You've actually played Fire Emblems before. I have. I've I've played Awakening. I've played Fates. I played the mobile game for 
a really long time. I don't play it anymore, but I used to. But I like them for the character dynamics because to me that was such a was always my favorite part of working in, in content creation and character and story creation, which was character dynamics. Character is king in this house. Character is always king. Character is queen. Character is royalty. Character is monarch. Yes. Character is the emperor. Um, <laughs> so... Emperor Edelgard. Ugh. God. Lady Edelgard. How good is that? My emperor. How good is that? I lost all train of thought because I was thinking about Edelgard now, so... Um, you, were, you were talking about how you liked Fire Emblem because yeah, character is king. Yeah, progressively, the, the character supports have gotten deeper and deeper and deeper with each successive title. Because people like visual novels, shall we say? Because people love visual people novels. People love visual um, novels if you will tell them it's anything except visual novel. As long as you say yes. anything... Is it, but the second you say visual novel, they're suddenly like, I don't like visual novels. You do! Yeah. You very clearly do. You do. You actually love a visual novel. You just have a lot of baggage around those words that are deeply rooted in other negative things. But you love visual novels, listener. I promise you that. You love romance, too. People love romance. It's another week. I had things to talk about, but I forgot about them. It's another book. I think we, we also burned through a lot of it because we actually got to t hang out and talk the other day. <laughs> so we got a lot of our feelings. We did. Chrissy got to watch me very frustratingly try and do some very loosely air quoted mechanical engineering here is what I'm going to call it. I was going to say surgery. You had to put together something with a screwdriver. It wasn't even put something together. It was I was trying to get a battery out of something very dangerously and stupidly, in fact, but uh, it required a screwdriver to do so. And Chrissy was my moral support the whole time. I was your cheerleader. I was like, you're going to get it. Chrissy's the reason I was able to do it with her luck stat boon. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't spoken about that on the podcast, actually. Would you like to explain? It's your concept. I would like to explain my luck stat boost. So in some games, when you pair certain characters together or when a character has a certain like attribute that they can give to their companions if they're like paired together, I like to think that I have a luck stat boost that any luck rolls you have to do while I'm right next to you get like a little boost. And... I didn't exactly come up with this. It's because Aaron keeps calling me lucky. And the time that really cemented it for me was when we were stuck in the rain and the car was dead. The engine would not turn on and we couldn't get home. And so he goes, you know, he turns the key. He goes, and I'm like, okay, just we're going to have to call a tow or something. He goes, no, 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 no. And he turns in the seat. You know, he's in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger seat. He turns to the side and he starts rubbing my shoulders vigorously. And I'm like, what are you, <laughs> are you rubbing me for luck? <laughs> and he goes, yes. And then he turns on the car. And it worked. And I was a believer. Now I officially will tell anyone yeah. I have a luck stat boost. Luck, luck boon. boon. You need some extra luck. I <laughs> uh, and we say that my boon stat, my boost, yeah. uh, historically has been charisma or charm, depending on which uh, which skill set you're you're looking at. But uh, that cha boost is mine. I love the cha boost. I love the yeah. It was like a charisma boost. I think yeah. That's what I said. Is it's a charisma boost for sure. Scooby is the, the people's yeah. princess. <laughs> I'm sorry that it's true. Uh, you're just going to have to get used to it now. This is your princess now. So uh, that's really all I had to talk about. I think other things happened. Hades came out. I got to play it. New PlayStation came out. I got to use that. Uh, my trainer complimented the length of my femurs, which was the most interesting compliment I've ever received. Let's talk about the lesbian billionaire club book one let's talk about the book let's dive right okay, in i have th uh, let's get into it let's so, get into it because i know you know that i have thoughts about that so disclaimer disclaimer before we begin billionaires shouldn't exist <laughs> billionaires should not exist that's our official stance all billionaires deserve the guillotine period but Bitch might just want to be swept away and taken care of every once in a while, and this book does fulfill that need quite well. In fiction, you can believe that they earned all that money. 
Almost. Um, I mean, at, at a certain point, I was like... Yeah, that is true. But, uh, you know, in fantasy, you can believe that maybe this is a good person. I can't even say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. None of the billionaires are good people. It's actually, like, well-established. But some of them are worse than others. And that's a fun point. In fantasy, it's okay to fantasize about evil monsters like werewolves, vampires... Werewolves aren't evil. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> let me get to the joke. And billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> you, you left to the defense of them so quickly. I didn't even get to get to my punchline. <laughs> because I love them. Werewolves I know. have done nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Werewolves have done a few things wrong. No. <laughs> okay. So, listener, for, you, for your information, this book... Not only is, is it a romance book, because it is. It is a romance novel. But is it, it is an erotica novel. Our um, first. It is our first erotica novel. Uh, I did not realize it was one when I picked it. Uh, so that was a fun surprise. Something about the title kind of gave me that vibe. I was not surprised. Let's say that. You you picked up on what this author was putting down. I did not. I went into it just like, oh, it's going to be a romance. Nope. No, nope. Sir. It's erotica. It was phenomenal. So yeah, erotica, I think, is a genre is really fun not just because it's sexy and oh boy is it sexy but because the authors have so much more space and freedom to play with what sex can mean and can do and can be for characters even in traditional romance quote-unquote traditional romance whatever the hell you want to define that as even in just romance as a genre if you take away the erotica all sex scenes are meant to serve a purpose um whether it's propelling the plot forward whether it's revealing something about one of or both of the characters, whether it's, you know, it, it's meant to be important and not just flavor. Um, Sex should be a crucible. Yes. In my opinion. It's not porn without plot, though I would argue all porn, porn without plot still does say something about the characters and reveal some something about characters. It but. should, at the very least. I've read some porn without plot that says absolutely nothing at all, and yeah. I loved it. You know, I'm not knocking on it. I think a lot of people use that tag, though, and it's not true, necessarily. But ideally, porn should say something. That's why I like writing sex between characters who, like, talking fan fiction for a moment, who for, like, never in a million years would I ever want them to be canon. Yes. Or, or they do have a super unhealthy relationship, or it makes no sense at all. Just because it's almost like a fight scene where you get the best fight scenes you learn something about the characters, something is at stake, and at the end of the fight scene, something has to change irreparably. Yes. The same with sex scenes. So. Exactly. It is exactly the same. It's uh, Sex is to fight scenes as romance as a genre is to horror as a genre, right? They're all two halves of yes. the same yes. coin. Yes. Um, which you is know beautiful. my feelings on, on romance and horror. I do. That's why I wanted to say it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Lesbian Billionaire Club. I don't even remember the heroine's names at this point. Madison was the fake name of the billionaire, and I don't think we ever learned her actual name. I think it's just Madison throughout the whole book. Yeah. So all the billionaires in the Lesbian Billionaire, billionaire Club are, one, lesbians. Two, <laughs> they use fake names so that even though they know who each other are, like, pretty obviously, um to better protect their all their secrets because there are women within this club who it cannot be known that they're lesbians. Uh, some of them would literally be killed. Some of them would be completely ostracized or stripped of their power or things like that. So it's a way for them to protect each other, which is really neat to have this, to imagine this club of powerful lesbians looking out for each other like that. Yeah. Gotta love that a little it bit. It was really nice. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Yeah. I didn't like all of the billionaire lesbians. Some of the billionaire lesbians are and shit. And I know I wasn't supposed to, but it yes. was really good. It was good. Uh, you could see how yes. it works. And you could you could believe it, which was more important. Yes. it. I did like that a lot. Our other heroine, we never get her point of view. The whole book is from our billionaire's point of view, is a early 30 something she is a waitress at like the local ihop or waffle house i'm gonna say waffle house because i prefer waffle house personally (laughs) Uh, (laughs) she's a waitress at a waffle house in chicago her name is claire claire her name is claire that's right and she their meet cute is one of my favorites in a while 
Claire literally hits Madison with her car. I I wanted to talk about that so bad. It's so good. This is the best meet cute ever. Because in the first chapter of this book, I thought I didn't know anything about this book going in. So in the first chapter of this book, Madison, our lesbian billionaire, has an escort swing by. Yes. And she's like, the escort is beautiful and... Okay, sidebar, please stop describing people of color with food items. I also, I paused and I was like, bad. Stop saying mocha. You get a pass if you yourself are black or brown and you're describing someone of your own color. (laughs) But if you're white, don't do it. (laughs) I have another note to say later, but. uh, Oh, I'm sure you do. There's a lot we can say about this. Uh, I also thought this uh, escort that Madison called was going to be the love interest at first. Because the book does set it up to make you think that right in that first chapter. They super duper do. She shows up. She's like, this is the last time we can ever see each other again. And my romance radar went, wee woo, wee woo. Oh, they're <laughs> yep. going to fall in love. <laughs> no, I was exactly the same. I was like, ah, this is it. Here we go. This is the faded lovers. Nope. She's, she's going to fall in love with her escort. Wasn't her. We literally do not ever see that woman again. <laughs> I, got, I was like, it just showed up so that Madison could be like, I stand there. I'm strong. I'm powerful. I take a sip of whiskey. And then something happens, and I drink more whiskey. And then she fucks her. And then she fucks her. And, and drinks, she drinks more, more whiskey. whiskey. <laughs> I was like, okay, I see what I'm getting into. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, they no, she literally, the mute cute is Claire, our heroine, our love interest, literally runs over Madison. In in a in the parking lot of a liquor store in middle of suburb not suburb, but you know, outside the immediate city of Chicago. Uh which Madison really does not want to be seen there. She is a billionaire in charge of like an entertainment empire, basically, is is the gist. Yeah. <laughs> and her poor chauffeur that day, like, also pulls security guard duty and, like, runs over and, like, gets her out of there. And Madison's like, this is the most mm-hmm. beautiful angel I've ever seen in my She's life. She's there, like, with a fucking concussion. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> with a concussion. Thinking about, God, this woman's skin turns me on so much. Oh, so we missed, we we can very briefly summarize it, but the book starts with all the lesbian billionaires being like, you have to calm down and settle down with a woman because your antics are going to put us all in danger if we're associating with you. Okay, and now back. And she's like, I'm never going to settle down with a woman. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
have two points of view on what I'm about to say next. So that photo leads to one of the first daydream sex sequences that we have. Yeah. And it squicks me out a little bit because, oh my god, invasion of privacy like crazy. But I do really like how this book did utilize daydreams as a tool to have more sex in it. I did like that a lot. Like, narratively, it was satisfying. It happens at least twice. It definitely happens more than that. But there's two times I can think of, which is her looking at the photo and then on the plane. Yeah, I think that happens on the plane, too. Yeah. Um, and it, and recently, I just started watching True Blood. Something like that happened where Suki is trying, is obviously lusting after Vampire Bill. And at one point, she goes, she walks across their... The graveyard that separates their houses. She bursts into his house and she just goes, I know this is crazy and maybe it's stupid, but I just want you so much. And can we just get this over with because I can't stop thinking about you and we can never do it again or talk about it. But it just... And he like silences her with a kiss. And I was like, oh, yeah, but it turned out to be a fantasy she was having. Oh, my gosh. And it, it was actually way more satisfying than the actual first time they fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's... uh. It's sad how frequently that's true. Uh, <laughs> but this book does a great job of utilizing daydreams. The first time, yes, it can definitely... Oh, I was so squicked. Squick you out. It can make you a little uncomfortable. Um, I was so uncomfortable with a huge portion of this book. I think it helps point to the fact that this billionaire... Billionaires are not good people. And I think this is one of those things that helps drive yeah. that point home a little bit. Because even though Madison does good things specifically for Claire throughout the events of this book and for some of her fellow lesbian billionaires. Like, inherently, she's still a billionaire. and the, She's still selfish. She only thinks about herself. Selfish and kind of greedy. Um, she doesn't... She, she has a very hard... The whole premise of this book is hinging upon the fact that Madison cannot take no for an answer. Correct. And going into this book, you need to be prepared for the fact that this is kind of a horrible protagonist. You know, it's like that scene in Supernatural Romances, not to get back to monsters and monsters and monsters. <laughs> but, you know, there's always that scene in, like, a supernatural romance when something happens to the heroine and the, the, the supernatural love interest murders the shit out of somebody. Yes. And we're, we're, we're okay with that. <laughs> we kind of like it. It, it makes you feel protected and loved and secure. Yeah. There's 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 an aspect to it that fulfills some sort of deep-seated desire in our hearts uh, and in our loins in many cases. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it definitely, it has a lot of those beats and a lot of those moments. And the reason Claire is such a good love interest is because, again, it is established right from the get-go that Madison gets what Madison wants. She does not take no for an answer. She al She's always able to get what she wants. And Madison says no, or uh, sorry, and Claire says no to Madison. Several times. Several times. Uh, it's incredible. So It's really great. It's after... really great because Madison keeps being like, this is the part where she's going to fall all over herself to sleep with me. And Claire's like, I gotta go. Bye. And Madison is so bewildered. <laughs> yes, she does not understand how this woman is rejecting her. Rejection? And in some points, she is valid in, in questioning that because it's stated, and again, unreliable narration when you have someone who's this full of themselves as your first person point of view character. But it is driven home that, like, when they do kiss, because they kiss, uh, even while uh, yeah. Claire turns her down. Um, it's very clear, though, that the chemistry is still there. So Yeah, the chemistry is so wild. Also, another thing you have to keep in mind for this is you have to believe that the chemistry is... And I, I had no problem believing this. The chemistry is so wild and so intense that these, these two just cannot keep their hands off each other i could believe it also it was the the chemistry and the honestly the sex on the page uh was so so well written and so well conducted incendiary yes yes this book is incendiary so madison so madison uh her first brilliant plan to woo claire is that she just shows up at her workplace at waffle house <laughs> at waffle house and she's like 
Oh, hello. I am the person you ran over. I'm just happy to be here again. And I guess she expects that to work. <laughs> yeah, she she plans to ask Claire out on a date there. But Claire, like, puts her down in her booth and then goes to go do other stuff. And Madison's like, wait, no, this wasn't the plan. Yeah, you, you didn't give me time to ask you out. Because she has a job, Madison. <laughs> Because she's a blue-collar working woman, Madison. Uh, and so these shitty college boys are being real shitty college boys to, to Claire on her shift. And Madison, who is in her... She's 51. Um, we love shitty women in this house. And we love older women in this house. So we have a shitty older woman heroine. Um, I, Chrissy's like nearly crying on video. You all can't even Scooby see it. It's so good. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> and she nearly breaks the arm of this boy who like smacks Claire's ass. Um, and it was great. It's a very good scene, actually. Uh, and the boys fucking bolt. Yeah, they dip. Uh, she scares the hell out of them to get out of there, and. Even after that, Claire can't really talk to her. She still has a job to do. So Madison waits. She's just like, oh, thank you for doing that. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Madison waits until Claire is off of work at the end of the night to speak to her again in the parking lot. And that's where they kiss. And it's super, super electric, super amazing. And Claire turns her down again. She was like, that was really incredible, like, behind the, this, like, behind the dumpsters, and Madison is just like, look, just give me a chance, because I know that once you feel this, I, I just, just to confirm that what I felt was real and not the concussion. So they kiss, and it's amazing, and they're totally about to, I think at this point, they totally were about to solidify it when fucking, whatever his name, Dino, Johnny. <laughs> I was going to say some random Italian name, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the most stereotypically Italian gangster kind of guy shows up. American Italian gangster, yeah. And he's like, "Hey, Claire, you owe me some money or something like that." I don't know. It's <laughs> Mike, the situation. <laughs> like, um, no, the, the, the this guy in the book is terrible, and we find out that Claire is working at a strip club, and Madison is like, "How did none of my..." It, private investigator stalkery funds find this out like genuinely claire had it so well hidden um no because, because tonight is also her first night yeah i was like it's not that it's not that she had her first it's not that she was that good at hiding it it's that she hadn't gone yet yeah. this was gonna be her first night and so madison sets it up that she's gonna go see claire without claire knowing that and she pays that shitty dude half the money he wants, and he thinks he's asking for a shit ton of money. It's like a thousand dollars or something, and she's like, "Fine." <laughs> um, she buys the strip club before she yeah. gets there. She puts she 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 hires a bunch of like muscle to go be the quote unquote customers for the night, so that she steps into that the audience. Yeah, she steps into that club, owning it, and knowing that half the people there will kill for her. And she, yes. God, I love her. It's, it's such a fun power trip being in this heroine's shoes. I will say that. I have a note to talk about that a little bit later also. Uh, and so she gets a private room with Claire. And Claire, poor nervous Claire. Uh, this sex scene. From this point on, I was like, this book is going to be so good because this sex scene alone really sold me. It was so good. It is a lap dance. Madison is not allowed to touch Claire, um, those are the rules at the club. That's the rules at most clubs. <laughs> um, and even though Madison doesn't follow the rules, technically, she makes an exception. She doesn't follow, like, I mean, in life, she makes her own rules. She never follows rules. Yes. You know, but yes. here she's like, I'm going to follow the rules yes. for Claire. And so Claire is in. Is she in blue lingerie this time as well? I think she was in white. I want to say she was. Okay. Blue is a recurring color throughout this book, which it is really cool. It kind of is, yeah. Um, but so she gives Madison a lap dance. And 
they 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 go at it. They they, they like, both come they both, like without touching each other. All with just like grinding and some tits in mouth and things like that. Uh, it's really fucking hot. That it, like I'm yeah. flustered thinking about that sex scene. It was so good. It was amazing, and that's when I was like, that's what that's one of the moments that really sealed the deal that their chemistry is Off just that charts. intense, you know? Yeah. And so after that, they both have that, well, they don't both have it. Claire has a very sobering moment of, what have I done? Um, and Madison is like, meet me down at the bar for a drink, question mark, or meet me at a table for a drink. I want to talk with you some more, blah, blah, blah. I want to get to know you. Um, and Claire agrees. And when Madison gets downstairs, she's nowhere to be seen. She goes to the bar, nowhere to be seen. And then fucking Mike the Situation. <laughs> back. That's not his name, but that's all I can picture now. <laughs> that's who I can think of, too. So the situation shows up. <laughs> comes, <laughs> comes back and is fucking furious because Claire has just quit. <laughs> She bought the entire strip club only for Claire to quit. On the spot. She's like, I can't do this, Dino, or whatever your name is. <laughs> I want to pause for one moment and say one of the few points that I had of like something that made me uncomfortable in this book is the way the author has Madison talk about and describe sex workers. Um, yeah is kind of slut shamey and kind of sex worker negative denigrating um it's it really least favorite thing the, the mocha skin thing i was also like oh this is not good this was the other thing where i was very much like i'm not comfortable with this i'm not okay with this it's only in that very beginning portion of the book when claire is still working at the strip club it's like really only in those first few chapters but it's not good and I wanted to take a moment to say on this podcast, like, sex work is real work. Sex workers deserve nothing but respect and deserve uh, nothing but the best in this world, frankly. So I true. wanted that on record because that, the very slut shamey and sex work negative, negative. Yeah. views expressed by the heroine. I feel like the author was aware of that and trying to make it sound like, like she wanted to have Madison come, quote unquote, rescue Claire. Yeah. So she had to make this situation seem bad. But I feel like like she kind of kept on flip-flopping on it. Like, yes. I respect sex workers. Whereas sex workers are great, as long as it's what they decide to do. So she, she's like, once I said that, now I can get into how this is a horrible thing that I have to save Claire from. This horrible, seedy... It, it teeter-totters a bit on, like... Uh, where where is the heartbeat of this point? Yeah, that's it. That's 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 the end of that segment. <laughs> On record, sex work is real work. Yes. Um, uh, so Claire fucking quits. So Claire She's dips. Like, Howdy. <laughs> she comes and she leaves. <laughs> so uh, hey, I, I just got that. I know. I'm, I'm, that was a good delayed reaction. I was I was, uh, I was still thinking about like yeah, this book really did have a shitty stance towards sex workers. <laughs> I'm still like mad about that. Anyway, <laughs> so so uh, so yeah. Madison is once again like she's gone. Blue screen of death. Like what do I do? Um, what do I have to do to get this woman to like me? Claire like literally doesn't leave her house for several. <laughs> weeks or something it's not that long but like she doesn't leave her house for a week or something like that afterwards something like uh, that yeah doesn't know what to do and this is where the stalking again kind of amps up again where madison finds out she always goes to this corner store oh she's a huge fan of the red Sox, white Sox, white Sox. are those baseballs <laughs> maybe it is the red Sox. <laughs> I should know this. I am a baseball fan. You you do the baseballs? But I'm comf- the Cubs. The, Is she the Cubs? a Chicago Cubs fan? I don't I, I don't know. Da Bears. <laughs> She's a, That's football. <laughs> oh, I knew that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God damn it. I'm 
failed. I have failed as a sports lesbian now. Oh, God. I can never be seen in public in the United States again. <laughs> Claire is a fan of the Chicago sports balls baseball team <laughs> whose name I definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> and so Madison goes and buys not just two tickets, but an entire row <laughs> that's close. Yeah, like a whole section. As of well seating. as a third ticket that is somewhere else. Uh, and she bribes the man who works at the local corner store that Claire is going to for groceries to give Claire the tickets <laughs> so that she can. I'm air quoting, bump into her at the game and sweep her off her feet. And you know what, listener? It fucking works. (laughs) It works is the craziest part. She, I loved it. Wow. It works. It was like, I was like, how is she just going to get into this baseball team? Is she just going to wait? And she, she, I thought she was going to buy tickets to like every game and show up to everyone until Claire finally went to one or something. But what actually happened? It was so much better. What actually happened is much a much smarter plan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not very smart. But thankfully, it was the Chicago Cubs. I, I got it. it I got I, it on the third try. <laughs> and it was the right sport that you guessed too. <laughs> I know that much. Uh, I am a baseball fan and I am a football fan, so I should have known on the first try. But Detroit Tigers are my team, so that's why I don't give a shit about Chicago baseball. <laughs> um, so it is a very magical date, actually. Um, and. Madison is like doubling down. She's like, I'm doing great. This plan is finally coming together. She and Claire have a genuinely fun time together. And it's not even just the incendiary chemistry. Like they genuinely have a good time at the baseball game together. And so they have a good date and she ends up getting, uh, getting Claire to come back with her to her penthouse they kiss, suite hotel. They do kiss. You want to talk about that? They kiss at the Cubs game. And she's like, how do I know this mysterious ticket Rashid magically had for me has something to do with you? And <laughs> and Madison's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Who's Rashid? <laughs> I laughed at It's that. like the good friend at the counter of the store I go to a lot. He gave me the ticket. And then, like, eventually Claire's like, I know you did this. I don't know how, but I know you did this. Because she doesn't know who she is at a glance. Yeah, Madison is keeping her identity as a super billionaire secret from Claire. Because that's the thing. Like, we all know who billionaires are now because we want to kill them all. But, like, (laughs) (laughs) but genuinely, like, before all of this class warfare, like, you couldn't necessarily go, like, oh, yeah, I know who the top ten billionaires are in the world. Like, I know who Elon Musk is. Now you can, but before this, like, you wouldn't be able to pinpoint some of these people who are it's true. the puppeteers at the top of the chain of everything. Yeah. You still can't in a lot of cases, but, um, so that's why Claire doesn't know. It's not like she's dumb. It's not like a Clark Kent thing. It is genuinely like, I don't, I would not expect an average everyday person to know who, who she is. Yeah. I mean, Madison doesn't, is like famous or whatever, and she's in the tabloids. But, like, she's not an, a household name always. Yeah. Like, Claire doesn't see her and immediately know. Um, and Madison doesn't want her to know for a while. She wants her to fall in love with her for her and not for her billionaire status. Yes, which is, she she realizes a little later in, I think, that, like, she does want that. Um, and it, it moves her into realizing, oh my god, I am in love with this woman, mm-hmm. um, which is very sweet. So they have a great time at the Cubs game. They kiss at the Cubs game, uh, and they go back to Madison's penthouse suite, um, and they bang it out. They bang it out again, and it's so... And again, and again, and again. And again, and again, and again. It's so good. There's so much sex in this book that is just absolutely delicious off the page. Um, Again, if you've been wanting more sex scenes, because we've read books that only have, you know, one sex scene in it, really, 
um, up this to this is the point. Book for you. This is the one to pick up if you can get past some of the squeaky things, which I think you can. Honestly, I think you can. Um, we could. Yeah. In the morning. Then again, Hannibal's one of my favorite shows, so I can get past quite a lot. <laughs> but this is nowhere near that. I get swept up in romance easily, so that's yeah, why I yeah. can. But in the morning, so reminder, the whole reason she is supposed to get with someone is to settle down, stop the tabloids from pinpointing her at all times so she is no longer putting the club at risk. Gets a call in the morning from the Lesbian Billionaire Club. Emergency meeting in, like, fucking Singapore. Hong Kong. You need to be on a plane yeah. two hours ago. Is it Hong Kong? Okay. okay I, I the only reason I remember is because I have it literally open right in front of me. Nice. And she kind of cusses out the lesbian billionaire on the other end of the line about this deal and how... Because, because she and Claire are in the news uh, for their kiss at the Cubs game. So she cusses out the billionaire on the other end of the line. And Claire overhears all of this and kind of freaks yeah, out. Yeah, she's like... Uh, and is wanting to leave. So then she goes, how can I get home? And <laughs> Madison sends her home in a fucking helicopter. <laughs> That's right. That's the most discreet. She wants way to avoid. Seeing... She can get her home. Yeah, she's like, Ugh. yeah, billionaires, man. God, I, I hate Madison <laughs> so much. Hate her. <laughs> hate her. Hate her. Hate her. Hate her. Hate her. Uh, but also love her. Um, I love her. <laughs> so she flies to the emergency lesbian billionaire club meeting, and like all of them are there, and she's like, oh god, this is it. They're kicking me out. I really fucked up bad if I was doing here. the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. That's the girl I'm going to settle with. I'm doing the right like she's pissed. And she she says her piece like right when she comes in. Fuck all you double crossing bitches. Yeah. I hate you all. I did what you asked me to and you could suck these nuts, okay? And then she like sits down in a huff and crosses her arms. Yeah. And her her former love like i would argue probably one of the greatest loves of her life who is also in the lesbian billionaire club and is the one who brought her into the lesbian billionaire club is like her her ally there and is like smiling at her sad smile and she again madison is very self-absorbed so she thinks it's all about her and then the club commences and they don't actually give a shit what's going on with madison right now they're actually pretty pleased with what she's doing uh her dearest friend has been the target of some uh, theft. Shit ton of money was taken from her. Diamonds. Something. Wait, no, no. The person who, yeah. The person wants diamonds yes. in response. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so they, the club has banded together to devise a plan to get her out of this. The hacker lesbian billionaire is like My on the case and all of them are setting up this gala for her to go to in LA and Madison's gonna be the point man on it and be the one who's interacting with this person to save the friend and that's all well and good and <laughs> it was very bond it's it's wild so she now is like okay but how do I get Claire back <laughs> oh <laughs> that's right she's like i don't care about you bitches and your billions i just want my girlfriend back well that's a lie she does care about val and she cares she about the other people and you know she she does care about all of them genuinely yeah um they are some of the only people she feels she can be herself with in some weird way oh and this is also the first time i think ever i've read a romance with even a side character who has a name similar to mine. Complete sidebar. But Chris. K-R-I-S Chris. Aaron calls me that all the time. Cute. And I'm just Was like, that the hacker? I believe it is the hacker. And so for many reasons, she was one of my favorite side billionaires. So the two side billionaires I was in love with, other than Val, who is the one that is the friend of Madison and former lover. Uh, I really loved Australian Chloe. Yeah. And... Saudi Arabian Xena. Uh, Xena is the one who Madison lost the bet to and is the whole reason she has to settle down, basically. 
Um, and she's like HBIC. She exudes she exudes so much power and sex appeal. I love her. I am in love with her. Uh, but Australian Chloe, I'm really hoping either book two or book three is going to be about Chloe. Yeah. Um, and I have reasons for thinking book two will be about Chloe, but we can talk about it at the end. Um, and there's also Lila. Lila? Lila? I think is the one who was the Which love. Which one was Lila? Maybe it was. Oh, it was. Val is the Russian yeah, one. Yeah, that was it. I liked Val too. Okay. But Sorry. Lila yeah. is the other one. Val was good too, but Lila is the one I meant for a yeah, lot yeah. of those. <laughs> so they're like, okay, so we had to do this thing. We had to do this mission to save Lila. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to save Lila's reputation and fortune. And so Madison gets back on her plane to fly back to Chicago. I don't actually remember what happens next. I just remember everything after this point oh, when they get and together. And that's when Johnny. His name was Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> that's when Johnny shows up again. And that's when Johnny calls her. Because he saw the photo of them at, at the Cubs game. And he connected the dots that this billionaire wants Claire. And so Claire is. The, and this also is the reason Claire has been so, so jumpy. Besides the fact that Madison has very clearly been stalking her, Claire doesn't want to get involved with anybody because she's currently being super duper blackmailed by Johnny. He has... Because he has a sex tape of her that her ex-husband sold. recorded. Yeah. Yeah. It was the violation of her consent. Like, in the book, it's very clear, cut and dry, but women should never be, like, shamed about wanting to oh, make Oh, no, 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 that was not the problem. Um, the problem wasn't that she made a sex tape. The problem no. was that this guy did it without her... Yeah, he did it without her consent, without her knowing about it, and then he fucking sold it. That was the problem. Did he do it without her consent? I forgot that part, so that is the problem, yes. I just forgot that detail. Again, it's been a little while and since I finished yeah, this book. Yeah, um, my ex-husband, he taped me. I didn't know it was happening. Then he sold it to Johnny, and Madison says, I don't care. I don't, I really do not. Is this what you were afraid I was? I would find out? Madison has a good moment there of really reassuring. And like the second she finds out, she gets Chris on the line. Chris! Basically. And is like, I need you Hacker to make this man wish he never existed <laughs> and then make him not exist anymore. <laughs> um, they delete this man from the face of the planet, basically. Yeah. Get you friends who will go to those lengths to help you. Again, it's like that supernatural paranormal romance thing. This is the part where your vampire lover will show up and Has the super squad. fucking kill a man for you. Yeah, super squad shows up and kills the man who's bothering you and then dumps the body in the river for the alligators to eat. Yeah, it's very good. But they they didn't actually kill this dude. They just, like, deleted him from the internet. They, they almost, <laughs> Madison wanted to kill him. But oh, yeah, she, she wanted this man to die. She resisted. Um, but she's not a vampire, so I'm not sure I would have been able to forgive her for that. Second sidebar, we had our sidebar three. This is going to be our third one now, because first <laughs> it's don't describe people of color as food items. B, yeah. sex work is real work. And now C, um, Madison, where the fuck do you get off judging this guy for his low income? And it's like, oh, this low income thug had a subpar education and probably came from an abusive background. Like. That doesn't make me hate this guy. It makes me feel bad for him and remind me that you're a fucking billionaire. <laughs> I didn't parse any of that. I feel like I totally did not parse any of that because I was very, like, goggles on. Man hurt girl. I will destroy him. So, like, that was, I also was, I, sh I probably should have picked up on that, but uh, I did not because he was a shitty man. The way she talks about this man. He is a very shitty man. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't actually care about what happens to him i don't even remember his name it's johnny but we're gonna keep calling him mike the situation but also just i found it very rich i just found it very rich uh, like oh you know billionaire shows up and is like this guy's poor and that makes him bad and i'm like that's not <laughs> <laughs> i i totally did not parse that so i'm glad you called it out how about you do something about that madison how about you redistribute your fucking wealth madison how about you get on the fucking guillotine <laughs> Sidebar, see. <laughs> anyway, that's the. I think that's the last sidebar. <laughs> I think that is actually because the rest of the book, I really, I feel like it picks up from here and just oh, gets better great. and better and better and better until the end. Oh yeah. Um, 
so they execute plan delete Johnny the situation off the map. <laughs> and they do. Uh, and when 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 Claire is brought up to Madison or when she arrives at Madison's apartment, Madison tells her like everything. You she tells her everything and then she says, You can walk away now. I did not do this because I you know, in a way as a way to buy you or anything like that. It's not that at all. But Claire chooses to stay. Yeah, she's um, like, you know, I did this to save you because I, it was the right thing to do, and you deserve better, and anything you want to do from here on out, you can, and, and so, very good. <laughs> to, to borrow Scooby's quote from the dragon episode <laughs> in the Vanisher's Palace, she's like, you can do anything you want, and Claire goes, then I'm gonna do you. Bam, chicka, <laughs> wow, wow! <laughs> I did say that. Yeah, she, that's exactly what happens. And they have more insanely hot sex. It was great. Hot, hot, scorching hot, wow, hot. It was really, really good. Uh, so that happens. And then, surprise, they need to go help Lila. Uh, it's time for that plan. And Claire is, like, all in. She's like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, let me help you. I can do this. And, like, she's calm and confident. And one of the first things... Madison thinks about in the meat cute when she gets run over by this beautiful woman because Madison is an entertainment empire right she has found pop stars she has found actors and actresses she like that is her main bread and butter for how she became a billionaire the one of the first things she thinks is this woman would be amazing on the screen but she doesn't want her to do that because she just wants her um so the idea of Claire coming into her world a little bit by attending this gala with her and doing all these things it like starts to play with that fantasy a little bit um and it comes back when madison yeah. sees her in her outfit for the gala yeah. there's a few there's a little there's some stuff about how claire has to get used to the fact that she's dating a billionaire now and she's like there's this big there's this huge distance between us i don't know if we can gulf and Madison's like, we can, we can, it's gonna be fine, I'll take it slow, whatever you want, I just don't want to lose you again, you know? She's in so, deep. She's in she's so deep. So in love. The billionaire has fallen in love with the commoner. <laughs> 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 so, they <laughs> <laughs> so they go to LA, because that's where the gala is, of course. And en route to Madison's, like, huge fucking McMansion, she goes, Wait, this is going to make Claire feel worse. And so she goes, driver, take us to the pier instead or something like that. Take me to my smaller cabin mansion. <laughs> and so Which they go to her Claire fucking away. yacht, basically. Oh, yeah, that's right. They go to the yacht. They go, they go to the yacht. Um, And it's at, genuinely, it's smaller than a yacht. It is a sailboat. I shouldn't call it a yacht when it's not a yacht. But uh, it is this it's got two beautiful... Cabins sailboat it does have two bedrooms so i suppose it probably still is considered a yacht <laughs> <laughs> fucking billionaires <laughs> so much <laughs> redistribute your wealth redistribute your wealth madison <laughs> and uh they when they get there Claire insisted on keeping one of her bags with her while the rest got sent back to the McMansion. And what comes out of this is, one, it is their first sex scene with a strap. And two, it is the sex scene where the color blue significance is brought up because Claire specifically picked this icy blue lingerie uh, for Madison because of previous encounters they've had and it just it drives her wild and it's a really good sex scene <laughs> every sex scene really in this good. book is actually phenomenal like you're just gonna hear me yeah, say that over and over there's not a single sex scene in this book i did not like yeah yeah no same which that's really surprising because there is another book we will undoubtedly read at some point in the journey of this podcast where there were a lot of sex scenes and then there were one or two towards the middle end of the book and i was like oh no i don't like this anymore uh because it just it wasn't my thing it wasn't my my kink so to say uh that does not happen in this book once every sex scene in this book delivers and makes you uh it delivers <laughs> it's just good i don't know what to say it's really good 
It's so good. So they have sex on the yacht. <laughs> then they have sex at the house. <laughs> uh. I think they also have sex in the changing room. No, they don't, because it's a big thing that she wants to fuck no, her in don't. that dress. But I don't think she gets to. <laughs> so they show up at the gala, and it's very Bond shit. It's very meet me at this painting. Claire buys the most beautiful dress. Oh, yeah. I love when they go to the gala. Lila is there, which is a little weird, but fine. Madison shakes it off. They are seated together. There is a live oh band uh, singer who Madison actually discovered. Um, so tooting her own horn, basically. And she finger fucks Claire under the table during the dinner. And I was living for that entire scene because Lila knows and is basically watching the whole time. <laughs> She's watching and giving tips. Yeah, and giving advice of like, wait for the applause to make her come, basically. And like, I don't know, that scene did something to me. <laughs> I think that might have been my favorite scene in this book. I don't know if it was my favorite, but it was close. It was the lap dance and this scene. I like the lap dance. I loved the scene on the yacht. I really did. I felt it was them being very open and vulnerable with each other. The ice blue lingerie stands out in my mind for some reason. Um, gotta love a good strap. But it's, yes, this scene. Oh, I guess I lied because I do have one more sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> sidebar number four. Let's go. This is not as not nearly as serious as any of the others, but it really fucking bothers me the proliferation of the word strap. <laughs> I don't know why. I say it even. I'll make the joke, like give her the strap joke. But when it's used in fiction, it's like and then she pulls out her strap and I'm like, Okay. You you did you picked that up from the internet. That's not your words. You know? <laughs> Just say strap on. It's an extra it's two extra letters. And it doesn't make me... <laughs> did it Did it say strap instead of strap on? I might just be... Oh, no, 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 it didn't. In the book, that's oh. what I liked about this book, is they said strap on. I'm like, thank you, God. Oh, okay, good. I don't know why it bothers me. I, I wish, I wish I knew why it bothered me as much as it does. It's very colloquial, and it's hard for that to convey over text. So, so like, when I see it in fanfic, it drives me crazy. Thankfully, I haven't seen it too much in books. <laughs> That's valid. This book did not do that. This book did not do that. It's a good sidebar. Yeah, this is a good sidebar. I'm glad that you said strap on, Casey Luck. Thank you for adding the extra two letters. I appreciate Ding. that. <laughs> Ding. I'm doing uh, a little uh, thumbs up. With a shiny teeth sparkle. Um, yeah, so, that's so it. yeah, they're at the gala. They <laughs> fuck at the gala. It's so hot. It awakened something in me. It was so good. This is my favorite sex scene. Commission. <gasps> Ooh. I mean, you love your ice blue lingerie. I love the ice blue lingerie. It's either going to be the ice blue lingerie or it's going to be the dinner. We'll discuss it. We'll I'll discuss think it. about it. If will you, listener, you will know soon enough. <laughs> You'll know. Because we got to pick and we got to find someone who will <laughs> commission NSFW for us. <laughs> draw, the, draw the titty. <laughs> While they're there. It's time to actually do the plan, save the les lesbian billionaire club. And so they go look at a specific, is it a Monet painting? I want to say Probably. it was. I can look it up. I have the thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I you've got, got the got book right open. There. Specific painting they go to. And Lila again goes with them. And that's when Madison realizes something is actually not right. And Lila takes them to meet the person who's been manipulating and blackmailing her. Uh, and it all goes very south very quickly. In the room, in the secret private business dealings room at this gala place, uh, is the world's most dangerous, shitty woman, lesbian billionaire. <laughs> Like an evil. My actual favorite billionaire was this piece of shit. Oh no, Chrissy. Oh yes, Chrissy. I didn't like I her. Loved I her. actually didn't like oh, her. Oh, she was the worst. She was worse than Madison. She is the she worst. She was disgusting. She was a blackmailer. She's evil. In my head, she was played by Sombra. <laughs> <laughs> she does bad, bad things. She actually has like black market blood money like very bad things whereas the rest of the billionaires are quote unquote good upstanding billionaires 
Yes. Good There's no such thing. There's no such thing. But like the book makes it clear that this lesbian has done things that the other lesbians are like, no, this is not acceptable. You can't be in the club. And Lila, being a fucking horny idiot, slept with this billionaire and accidentally let it slip in the throes of passion <laughs> that the lesbian billionaire club exists. And she and so Georgia, that's her name, right? Georgia, fuck, Georgia Delane. I would have never get, if you had put a gun to my head and say, "What's the name of that shitty billionaire from the book you enjoyed? You liked her a lot." I would not have been able to tell you that was her name. I wouldn't have been able to tell you. I swear to God, in my head, she's just Sombra. Like in my head, I was like, "Oh, this is Sombra <laughs> from Overwatch." <laughs> I su- I supplanted her in my head with Sombra for the whole rest of the book. Uh, of course you did. So, uh, Georgia Delane kidnaps Lila and and Claire, Claire, and Madison is like secretly a little butch old action hero because. I loved it. It was, it was very good. When Georgia takes the two of them away and is like threatening to kill them, she has a gun. She's she's like not fucking around. Madison exits the room, pauses, and then like rips one of the paintings off the walls, which immediately triggers all of the alarms because it's world famous priceless painting gallery. Um, yeah, Monet's and Dali's and stuff like and that. And immediately she runs back to the room and like kicks her way into the room and like is action hero running after them like it's very very action-packed this sequence uh in a good way runs after them runs after them nearly gets shot like three times um and manages to save rescue lila yeah and claire yeah she saves both of them so exciting but oh god georgia manages to get away it's scary but they survive to live another day. Yeah, a lot of erotica have a villain for the sake of having a villain just because they need some sort of conflict or whatever and they don't want the couple to break up. There's an actual plot in this book series. There's an actual plot and Georgia Delane, a.k.a. Sombra Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> As like a really serious villain and she does stuff and she gets God. away with it and she's like really actually intimidating which i appreciate in a villain like there's nothing worse i would not have liked her if she was a boring dumb villain like johnny the situation dino okay i don't care about that guy true georgia delane is like evil and i'm like oh my god i love you yeah and she's smart georgia delane is an actual antagonist yeah. and it's great um, oh, I yes lo- i love a good villain she's smart she's sexy she's very powerful and intimidating so she gets away and LAPD is like, we're finally going to catch her. Thank you so much. And the lesbian billionaire club is like, she's no way. in Hong Kong already by now. <laughs> you know, like, she's gone. She, there's no way. She's not in LA. And I was wrong. Madison does get to fuck Claire in the dress. I thought she did. She super does. Because <laughs> I'm reading it right now and it's really good. <laughs> Please give us some choice snippets, Chrissy. I was, yeah, I was about to say, we've been talking about these sex scenes, but we have not read any of them. I don't have the book open in front of me, which is the main reason why. If you, like, I don't know, screenshot the pages, we can read some of it together. I don't mind reading. Okay. Um... <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me, let me let me lubricate my throat. Hold on. I need some water. I'm thirsty. <laughs> this book will make you thirsty. So they are both are like, oh man, we almost died, and that makes me horny, right? So As it does. <laughs> as as it does. Keep your dress on, I say, taking her hand and leading her outside to the pool. The sky is filled with the last hints of moonlight before it dips below the horizon and brings on the dawn. One minute. And then she goes, she gets her strap on. Da, 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 da. There is desire in her eyes, but something else too. It's as if while I was gone, she missed me, and not because I have money and power, but because I'm me. Aww. Catching my breath at the idea, I suddenly want to do more than take her on the cushions, but to make love to her, to make her feel so entirely consumed, she'll never think of anyone else. Come here, I tell her as I undo my belt and pull down my zipper. God, you're so sexy, she says as she walks to me. Her body in the incredible dress is what's sexy. 
I suck in a deep breath, and when she's close, I take her by the hips to pull her against me. When she brushes my strap on, I watch her face. Her eyes half closed as she presses harder into me, and I know she wants to feel me as much as I want to be inside her. It's so good. The it's sex good. scenes in this it's book very good. are so fucking good. You have to read it, listener. You have to read this if you're looking for good sex scenes. Um, because it will not disappoint. Again, I went into this book honestly not expecting much to be real with you, to be real real with you. I was like, this is going to be our first trash. The title is The Lesbian Billionaires. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be our first trash on Trash and Treasures. Uh, but no, this was a treasure, you guys. Um, and I, I can't believe it. I'm so happy it is a treasure, though. So uh, after that, after they bang, and it's hot, 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 hot. And she begs to come. Yep. It's really yep. good. It's so good. And, like, Madison's like, I want you to wait for me. And she's like, I want to come with you. And then they just, like, it's, it's really good. It's <laughs> I don't know what to good. say. <laughs> that sex scene is one of the best. That one is super duper good. After all that, as they are learning this new life, the Lesbian Billionaire Club calls another meeting. And yep. do you want to take it away? Because I know you had uh, big feelings about this. I had so many fucking feelings. Okay, so they have one last meeting of the Lesbian Billionaires Club. It's not the last meeting. It's the last meeting of the book. Of the book, yeah. yeah. You're right. <laughs> and that makes like, it sound like the Lesbian Billionaire Club is disbanding and reader that is, or listener that is not what's happening. <laughs> so they're like, so how are things going with Claire? And Madison is like, I'm so in love with Claire and I'm going to be with her forever. Thank you so much for forcing me to settle down. And they're like, okay, so one last thing. Lila X has got us into trouble with George Delane, a.k.a. Sombra Overwatch. <laughs> we need to vote if she stays in the club or not. Yeah, and Lila's like, I understand if you don't want me in the club anymore, I put you at risk. And they're like, a few people vote to kick her out, but it has to be unanimous. So a few people don't vote to kick her out, so she stays. But she does get a penalty, like, you don't get to fuck anybody for a year, because you, your horny ass, fucked Sombra Overwatch and let slip about our club, and that's why Your horny this. ass keeps talking about our club when you're having sex, because that's how, that's how Madison got into the club also. Right, yeah. <laughs> Years ago, admittedly, but still. And she agrees to that. She's very, she's very coy about it, which I was enamored with. I love all these shitty older women so much. And uh, admittedly, we don't know how old some of them are. but still. I think a few of them are young, but most of them are at least 40. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, there's a one throwaway line that makes me think and hope that Chloe is the next book. The next book is out. We haven't decided if we're going to read it or when we're going we to read it. I'm definitely going to read it at some point. The reason I think book two might be about Chloe is because Madison has one throwaway thought line of how she's the only one who knows about the girl who got away yep. in Chloe's life. And I was like, is it going to be exes getting back together, a.k.a. one of my favorite tropes of all time? I think it is. I and so, super duper think it is. Um, I, I, listener, like, I was jumping up and down in my seat just now. <laughs> You know, like that's how excited I am at the thought. Chloe of this. is another one who doesn't believe in love, but for different reasons than me. Her past haunts her, and only I know the whole truth about the girl who got away. What? And then they don't ever talk about it again. <sighs> the throwaway line that stuck in my heart and made me fall in love with lesbian billionaire Australian Chloe. Casey, um, look, what have you done to us? We are super fans of the Lesbian Billionaire Club now, which is something I never thought I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't expect, a, no offense, I didn't expect to like it this I know, much. I know. <laughs> I was like, ugh, a billionaire? Ugh, okay, sure. I, I know. No, I, I'm in. I'm all in. And then the sex is so good, and the billionaires are so good, and the shitty women are so good, and the ending. Do it. Fuck, with all due respect, you, Casey Luck! <laughs> with all due respect. We have a dangerous ad... Oh, my God. Okay, so at the end, they vote to keep Layla, Yay. and they're like, now let's move on to our last topic. This one will take longer to fix, I'm afraid. A murmur goes around the room. If at all, Chris adds under her breath, and this scares me. 
If the technical genius in the group is unsure, we are all probably screwed. Xena nods at Chris's statement. Indeed, we have a dangerous adversary, she says. Georgia Delane. The end! The end! That's where it ends. Book two is out already, um, which is... We have to read it. Do you want to read it next? Are you picking book two as our next... <sighs> Do you have any other books in mind? I mean... I've got a whole list, but it's your it's your turn. I chose the Lesbian Billionaire Club. I'm just book so one. I'm happy to read book two. This is not an objection to it. I'm like it's it's your choice. Oh no no no! I know. I'm just so upset that Sombra Overwatch is <laughs> out there menacing <laughs> these poor billionaires. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I did not make a mini review for this one yet, so I'm gonna do it on the fly. The Lesbian Billionaires Club. I'm gonna surprisingly give this a 5 out of 5 stars. FF. Tropes I love. Shitty women. Older women. May, December. Fucking scorching hot incendiary sex scenes. Uh, baseball games as a date location. <laughs> Those are the tropes I love. And yeah, again, my my little you've you've heard it all in here, listener, but my little short line will be I did not expect to love this. I fucking loved this. Um, hot, 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 hot. That's my mini review. 800 fire emojis. 8,000. 8 million. 8 billion? <laughs> You're such a dumb. <laughs> You're such a I'm here all week. No. Oh, no. Okay. So that'll be my mini review. That'll go up now, and you will... Didn't I... Now I will have to make my decision, except I'm not actually going to make it right now. I'm going to edit out this super long pause. Because weren't we talking about a mermaid book? I think so. You had sent one. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, yes, you did send this one. The Fate of the Stars. My only trepidation is that I have not read this book I don't know if it has a happily ever after. Is it a romance? I don't know. It says it's a ro- Fucking- uh, it's- <laughs> You're afraid of picking another book that's not a romance, aren't you? <laughs> I am so afraid, Scooby. <laughs> the Fate of Stars, a fantasy lesbian romance, is how it's literally branded on Amazon, so I'm gonna assume okay. it's fine. I will- <clears throat> So many people say that things are romance. They said- People have told me that Gideon the Ninth was a romance. It's not. That's why my mini review of Gideon the Ninth is romance question mark explanation point mini review because it's not. Like it's it's a very cool sci fi book with romance in it. And obviously we adore Gideon the Ninth in this house. We love Gideon the Ninth in this house. Griddle is uh a goal, so to speak. Oh, uh, oh, oh in jock oh. terms. Final sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> sidebar I... number five before i read the summary slash uh little little excerpt from this book that we will read next okay i have to share with you the greatest fanfic ever written ever put down to words i have to share this is with it you. noelle stevenson's she fanfic it is not it is a great getting the ninth fanfic and i want you to click on that link and read that summary Okay, hang on. I have to agree and consent to terms because I'm not logged in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, then. I'll read it. I'll read it for I, you. No, I... I, I <laughs> you want to do it, Scooby? No, nope, you can do it. I'm going to read the actual <laughs> book summary that we're going to do. Is this, like... I'm, I can't even, like, read the tags on this because I'm so bewildered right now. <laughs> The name of this fanfic is Menage a Sank by Corvid Lesbian, and the summary is Hero Nova has trained for one singular purpose, and she will not be denied this chance. To take four dicks at once. <laughs> Hero gets lovingly gangbanged by Gideons. <laughs> and it's Good. It's got so many it's tags, really... I am, like, going cross-eyed. Here's a sampling of the tags. Oh boy, here we fucking go. Five some F F F F F triple penetration, double penetration, <laughs> blood plugs, copious <laughs> amounts of lube, weird AU where all the AUs are chilling together and they fuck. 
magic flesh dick. <laughs> Biting little uh as a treat. <laughs> a little blood. <laughs> Size queen hero Nova. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot on this. There's... And it's a... I'm gonna link... We're gonna have show notes and I'm gonna link this fic. Because it's a treasure. <laughs> and it's 1,000... It's Spit 10... roasting, which I only learned the term for because of this monster of a fic, is another tag on this... Uh, it's 10,069... It's 10,069 words! What?! <laughs> And the notes say, yes, the word count is intentional. Oh my god. I told you this was amazing. <laughs> okay. This now is so let's... much. Corvid lesbian, I salute you. <laughs> now let's talk about the book we're going to okay. read next. Chrissy has selected our next book. And it is... The Fate of Stars, a fantasy lesbian romance. Sea and Stars, book one, by S.D. Simper. So here is the Amazon uh, kind of summary. Take it away. <clears throat> the Fate of Stars, the first book in the Sea and Stars trilogy, is delightfully dark and sexy, full of lush imagery, vibrant characterization, and enough adrenaline to keep me up way past my bedtime. Anna Burke, award-winning author of Thorn and Compass Rose. <clears throat> a devout mermaid, a disgraced princess, a feud as ancient as the gods. Worlds collide when Talora is kidnapped from her ocean home and forced to be a pet to a tyrannical foreign empire. Her only hope for rescue lies with a sworn enemy, Princess Doriel, infamous for her stone heart and conflicted past. But when Doriel's kingdom comes to the cusp of war, could their uneasy alliance be the key to defeating a common foe? Or will their growing feelings for each other lead them to ruin? From the world of fallen gods comes a tale of ancient magic and cutthroat politics and finding redemption through love. Those are all things I like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, this book sounds like it may be a hidden treasure. It may be. I hope so. so I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to, to read this one and talk about it. I'm going to have to figure out uh, how to pause Hero of the Ninth on my Kindle so I can speed through this, but I'll figure that out so that was uh that was episode seven of trash and treasures it sure was i think we're gonna start posting these soon we need to we're just waiting on art now i think yeah now we're just waiting on art and we're paying these people and we obviously. are paying these people um yeah that should not ever be questioned we are absolutely yeah. paying every artist we we work with for this show the thing is also uh when i i realize now that we've been recording these without knowing the artist so for the final version that goes up, we have to be like, we have to, I have to have, I have to add in a little thing, or you could record something and send it yeah. to me, and be like, in this episode, we have an illustration by blah blah blah, and we'll have show notes, you know. We can definitely do that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. no problem. Hey Trash and Treasures listeners! Each and every episode of this podcast comes alongside a beautiful art piece commissioned by me and Chrissy for your viewing pleasure. This week we had the privilege of commissioning Muna, an artist we've both adored for quite some time, and is known for incredible tales of Berseria fan art and fan art of a game I used to work on, Villainous Knights in the Lovestruck Camp. We were crossing our fingers that they would be up for the spicier commission that was this piece, and ooh, were we excited when they agreed. I hope you enjoy this piece as much as we do. Muna did a perfect job. You can find Muna on Tumblr and Twitter at MunaDrawsOn, and Instagram at ProteusMuna, and munadesign.art. You can find links to all of their platforms in our post and our transcript, like always. Is that an AO3? It is. I it's have an, an AO3 a water bottle uh, because I, love it. I donated to them uh, last year as part of one of their drives, and I donated it this year where I could get a water bottle because I'm trying to hydrate myself better. Um, and my parents sent it over in one of my more recent care packages, probably for my birthday. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a nice little, like, steel aluminum water bottle. It's nice and chill. I love it. It's cold. I get to rep how much I care about transformative works and freedom of literature. Uh, so it's, I like it. I like it yeah. a lot. It's really good. I like it. I, it was, I was, 
I just noticed it. It's so good. I want it now. I donated it at the tier where I got the the enamel pin, the Hugo oh, nice. Award winning yes. <laughs> enamel pin. I am now an Because you're a Hugo Award winning author. Thank you. I am. So am I, technically. I have Vic on AO3. Oh my god. I, I can't believe we can now officially put it as a tagline for this podcast. A podcast by two Hugo, Hugo Award winning authors. <laughs> You know, my most recent fic up on AO3 is doing surprisingly well. What is it? It's a short little piece for a Netflix series called Alexa and Katie, which is about... Oh. uh, You want want them to be lesbians the whole time. They aren't, but my fic fixes that. Um, Alexa has cancer as they're entering high school and it's four seasons following them through each year of high school um and she's in remission through through all of it but it's you know there's still challenges and things like that and katie is her best friend their neighbors their childhood best friends they have a tree house in the middle of their two houses that they can get to by climbing out their windows like it's the perfect foundation for a best friends to lovers uh and so this the series ends with them going off to college and they're going to different colleges Katie's going to NYU or something like that. And Alexa's going to um, University of Northern Carolina, something, something like that. Um, So different schools. And my fic is set uh, post series. They're at college. Mm -hmm. Alexa realizes she's been in love with Katie this whole time. Um, That's so sweet. And there's not a whole lot of fics for Alexa and Katie. Like, admittedly, the show targets a, a teen audience, and I binge watched it because I was sad. <laughs> um, and I loved it. I loved the show. It shook me by the shoulders after four days of been watch- watching it and going, write a fic, write a fic for these two right now, do it. And I did it. The tenses are a bit all over the place, but people seem to really like it. So uh, That's so good. I love that. Yeah. I have to read it. I have to watch the show and read it. Yeah, it's called hashtag. It's called hashtag Alexa and Katie because they say hashtag. Aww, blah, 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 that's in their the little catchphrase. That's so cute. Yeah, if you read it, you'll let me know what you think. But uh, I love Ao3. I love Transformative Works. I'm happy to have donated to them. I will donate again uh, the next time the drive comes around because it is important that we have free spaces to put up creative. We don't want to go back to the dark times. When we would shoot our pants no. every time Anne Rice even looked at us. <laughs> we don't. We don't want that ever again. Genuinely. Uh, and I don't think young people realize just how likely of a conclusion that would be. Should we lose spaces yeah. like AO3. So um, thankfully, so. I we there's people out there. I mean, they always hit their goal and above and beyond. So I, And I've been donating every year for a while now. So. It's important to me. Yeah. It's important to have a space like that. Without spaces like that, you and I it's never true, would have met. It's true. Now, with that, <sighs> I think that concludes right? this episode. Some sometimes, sometimes we just need to get into the book and talk about what we want to talk about, and then like the rest of our conversation yeah, yeah. comes more naturally. <laughs> so that was it. We had many sidebars. I am Zex. There were only five. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them were just me being weird and petty. <laughs> <sighs> One was petty. One was me being weird and horny. Because I think the fifth sidebar was Harold getting gangbanged by Gideon's. God. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. Yeah, I'll talk to you later, Scooby. Hello, I love Chrissy. you. This is Trash and Treasures signing off. We forgot to even say the podcast name in Just... today's opening. <laughs> Let's say it now. Welcome to episode seven of Trash and Treasures. The Walla Walla Podcast, where we talk about romance novels featuring queer ladies of all stripes.